The most brutal, fearless, violent and powerful boss a crime syndicate has ever had. Unlike Pablo Escobar, who usually lets you choose between plata or plomo, or silver or bullets, the boss of bosses of the Sicilian Mafia has never given any choice to his victims. There's no love or feelings in this story, only brutality. The brutality of Salvatore Rina, il capo dei capi. So, as many other mafiosi, Salvatore Rina also used to have a nickname, actually more than one. The most famous is Toto, which is a common nickname in Sicily for those named Salvatore. Another was Ucortu, which means short man. In fact, Salvatore Rina was a very short man since he was only 1 meter 58. But the most descriptive nickname was definitely the way Rina used to be called by his rivals, the Beast. And you should check out our other videos on Mafia nicknames, which are actually pretty interesting. So in 1958, when relations between Michele Navarra and Luciano Leggio started to collapse due to a, a difference in opinion in the way of conducting business, Navarra organized an assassination to get rid of Leggio and his loyal men, which included Salvatore Reina. Obviously, Leggio's clan managed to survive, otherwise our story would end here. And after a month, they struck back. Michele Navarra was assassinated in the street when seven killers armed with machine guns shot his body 92 times. Amongst them, there was Salvatore Reina, who was already in charge of the operation. And after the, uh, after the assassination of Navarra, Corleone wasn't actually in the hands of the newcomer. It was only in 1963, after murdering 58 people, Luciano Leggio was the new mafia boss of Corleone, and his three young soldiers were no longer farmers. Provenzano and Bagarella were underbosses. Reina was acting as the right arm of Luciano Leggio. Corleone and the surrounding areas were conquered. Despite Luciano Leggio and his Corleonesi controlling quite a large territory, Corleone and the nearby areas were not actually offering real business opportunities. Palermo was the city where the real money was. Real estate speculation started to become a popular business for families in Palermo. So Leggio decided to approach Salvatore La Barbera, a Sicilian boss in Palermo, asking to become part of this business. However, in 1962, as we've seen in the video about the history of the Sicilian Mafia, Palermo was hit really hard by an internal war, the so-called First Mafia War. Also, Salvatore Rina himself wasn't spared by the conflict, ending up in jail again as suspected killer of several mafiosi. And during his time in jail, Rina fully relied on his charisma, becoming some sort of consigliere or advisor to mafia bosses. It was rather singular to imagine that this short farmer was advising other mafiosi with a much longer tenure in criminal life and, of course, much more established criminal resumes. And according to the statements of several turncoats, Reina was seen as a sort of oracle inside the prison where other mafiosi were quietly queuing up to have their chance of talking to him for suggestions. And this introduces another aspect of Salvatore Reina that too often people forget. Reina, unlike other bosses, wasn't only guns and violence. Behind his simple look and an unnatural aggressiveness, there was a talented and a really bright mind. And according to several sources, Salvatore Rina told his closest friends from Palermo to stick with Rosario Riccoboni and dump all the other bosses, who soon would be killed. Well, this prediction came true 20 years later when Riccoboni, together with the Corleonesi, won the Second Mafia War, before Reina decided to also eliminate his untrustworthy allies. But we'll see this later. During these years in jail, Reina also established important connections with other mafiosi, like Gaspari Mutolo, who, after becoming the key player in the Sicilian Mafia's heroin trafficking, decided to collaborate with the Italian justice, providing unbelievable evidence on the relations between the Mafia and the politicians in Italy. The Corleonesi family, after being jailed, received other bad news, such as ongoing maxi trials against them in Bari for the murders of the Michele Navarra and his affiliates. However, 
After receiving a threatening unsigned letter, the president of the court indicting Salvatore Riina and his friends decided to acquit all of them. The letter was as simple as it was clear. You people from Bari, an Italian city, have not understood or rather do not want to understand what Corleone means. You are judging honest gentlemen whom the Carabinieri and the police have denounced on a whim. We want to warn you that if a gentleman from Corleone is convicted, you will be blown up. You will be destroyed. You will be slaughtered and so will your families and relatives. All that remains for you now is to be judicious. Luciano Leggio, Salvatore Rina, and all the others, including Provenzano and Bagarella, were free. However, once back in Corleone, Salvatore Rina was arrested again and relocated to Bologna on house arrest. On the 18th of July 1969, Rina decided to escape, officially becoming a fugitive. Six months later, Rina led the squad together with Provenzano and Bagarella to assassinate Michele Cavateo who was responsible for starting the first Mafia war. And during the assault, known as the Viale Lazio massacre, Collagero Bagarella was killed, but the attack was successful and the entire Cavatayo clan was murdered. The blood trail of Salvatore Rina continued over the years when he was acting on the orders of several Sicilian Mafia bosses. However, in 1971, a point of no return was reached by the Sicilian Mafia. For the first time, Cosa Nostra ordered the killing of a government official. Reina was in charge of the gang who murdered Pietro Scaglioni, the head of judges of Palermo. Now, as mentioned before, this represented the first time the Sicilian Mafia intentionally killed a man who was part of the Italian institutions. In other words, the Mafia had officially declared war against the Italian government. Now, two important events happened in 1974, which changed forever the life of Salvatore Riina. The first one was the wedding of Riina with Antonina Bagarella, sister of Leo Luca Bagarella, another member of the Corleonese family. Now, the priest who celebrated the ceremony was the cousin of Frank Three Fingers Coppola, a notorious drug trafficker and ally of Luciano Leggio. But that's not all. The priest, Don Agostino, wasn't only the cousin of a mafia boss, but also an affiliate of Cosa Nostra, specializing in kidnappings. Now, it may sound crazy, but it isn't that crazy. The involvement of the Vatican with mafia families is actually well documented. And I wouldn't rule out the possibility that we'll make a video on this as well sometime in the future. However, let's get back to our story. So, Salvatore Rina got married to Ninetta Bagarella, and the couple had the first child shortly afterwards. Maria Concetarina. Now it needs to be noted that all the information about the wedding ceremony and the kids of Totorina has been found out many years later, and those were only discovered during police operations storming apartments or offices of affiliates. Now, for example, during the first arrest of Leo Luca Bagarella, the police conducted a search of his apartment, and they just happened to come across Riina's wedding invitation card. And this happened to be already a few years after the event. The second one, to some extent even more important for the business career of Salvatore Rina, was the arrest of Luciano Leggio in Milan. And since Leggio has already escaped once before, this time the authorities actually made sure to keep him in prison for the rest of his life. And unfortunately for Leggio, this did indeed happen. On the 16th of May 1974, that was the last day of freedom for Luciano Leggio, who was incarcerated in a maximum security prison in Sardinia. And since that day onwards, the Corleonese family had a new boss. Extremely brutal, smart and ambitious. Salvatore Rina was consecrated as the new emperor of the Sicilian Mafia. So that's all for now, and we'll see you soon with the next video in Salvatore Riina's life. Until then, we'll see you next time. Take care. Cheers.